Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of an abscessant C. This work was published in Jock by the group of Duane Ren Ho. An abscessant C was originally isolated from metabolites of a pathogenic actinomyces, nocardia abscessus, in 2017. It is an inhibitor of heptosal transferase 1, which is critical to the synthesis of lipopolysaccharides present on the bacterial cell surface. This group has previously reported a 14 step synthesis of nabsessin A in 2017. Though these molecules differ only in the position of the hydroxymethylbenzoyl group, the strategy that they used to synthesize nabsessin A could not be adapted for nabsessin C, resulting in a new route, which is presented in this paper. The challenges associated with this molecule result from a highly functionalized cyclohexane core, which bears five contiguous stereocenters, four of which are bonded to oxygen groups. Two of these oxygen groups are functionalized, one as a carbamate and the other as an ester. This means that the root must be able to selectively manipulate these oxygen groups and functionalize them individually. To synthesize this molecule, the researchers would draw on the chiral pool and use a starting material that already had many of the desired chiral centers present in its structure. This could be further manipulated using a stereoselective reduction and an orthogonal protecting group strategy would allow selective manipulation of the hydroxyl groups. So let's start with the synthesis. The first step of the synthesis was to protect myoinositol with triethyl orthoformate. This is first protonated by tosic acid, eliminating an equivalent of ethanol and forming a reactive oxonium intermediate. This is attacked by one of the hydroxyl groups, forming an orthoformate that undergoes further reaction, eliminating another equivalent of ethanol, and then reacting with a second hydroxyl group on the molecule. This process repeats once more, forming a compound with three protected hydroxyl groups in an 80% yield. This intermediate is highly strained, as the cyclohexane contains five axial bonds, which suffer from 1-3 diaxial interactions. This is due to the reversibility of the orthoformate formation, which equilibrates to form the most substituted compound. This requires three of the hydroxyl groups to be in the axial conformation, and this can only happen with hydroxyl groups in the 1, 3 and 5 positions. With this in place, the next step was another protection, this time with benzyl bromide and sodium hydride. By using only two equivalents, they can selectively protect the two axial hydroxyl groups in a 60% yield. This is unexpected, as axial hydroxyl groups are typically less nucleophilic than equatorial groups due to steric hindrance from other atoms in the axial positions. It has been proposed that this selectivity arises from chelation of the cation between the two axial oxygen atoms. This drives the selectivity to form alkoxides on the axial groups, making them more nucleophilic than their equatorial counterpart. With five of the hydroxyl groups now protected, they could selectively deoxygenate the two position. To do this, they first formed a xanthate ester with carbon disulfide. This is attacked by the hydroxyl group, and the sulfur anion is then methylated using methyl iodide. With this in hand, they could then carry out a Barton-McCombie deoxygenation. AIBN is first heated to undergo homolytic cleavage, eliminating nitrogen gas, to form a radical. This abstracts a hydrogen atom from hypophosphorus acid, and the resulting phosphorus radical attacks the xanthate at the carbon atom, forming a radical that is stabilized by the three adjacent heteroatoms. The carbon oxygen bond at the C5 position then undergoes homolytic cleavage to form a carbon carbon double bond and leave a radical residing on the substrate. Hypophosphorus acid once again acts as the hydrogen atom donor, forming the target compound in a 65% yield. With this complete, they could then remove the orthoformate group in an 80% yield using hydrochloric acid. Without this group tethering the oxygens together in the axial conformation, the chair can flip, placing all of the substituents in the more stable equatorial conformation. In the next step, the authors could carry out an enzymatic acetylation which desymmetrizes the molecule. While the previous compounds all contain many chiral centers, 
These compounds are not optically active, as they are meso compounds. This means that they possess an internal plane of symmetry. By reacting the compound with vinyl acetate using porcine pancreas lipase, they could selectively react one of the hydroxyl groups, forming a chiral product with 90% yield and 99% EE. They were able to confirm the stereochemistry of this product using X ray crystallography. Taking this compound forward, it was then oxidized using PCC. This was attacked by the less sterically hindered hydroxyl group, which adds to the chromium centre and then eliminates a chloride anion. This then acts as a base to complete the oxidation of the hydroxyl group to a ketone in a 70% yield. This ketone was then condensed with hydroxyl ammonium chloride, forming the oxime in a 90% yield. This was then reduced with lithium aluminium hydride to form the primary amine with a 9 to 1 DR. This selectively forms a product with the amine in the equatorial position, as this minimizes 1 3 dioxyl interactions. This amine could then take part in an amide coupling reaction with a mon protected hydroxybenzoic acid. This is first deprotonated with diisopropyl ethylamine, and the resulting carboxylate then attacks HBTU. This eliminates an oxybenzotriazole anion, which then comes back as a nucleophile, eliminating a urea byproduct and forming a more activated ester. This is then attacked by the amine, which forms the amide bond in a 68% yield over two steps. With this in place, they could then install the carbamate. This was done using trichloroacetyl isocyanate, which is preferentially attacked by the less sterically hindered hydroxyl group. This could then be hydrolyzed using aqueous potassium carbonate to form the compound in an 80% yield. In the next step, they functionalized the remaining hydroxyl group. 6 methyl salicylic acid was reacted with EDC and dyad using microwave heating. This was required as the hydroxyl group is quite sterically hindered and unreactive. EDC is first attacked by the salicylic acid, and the resulting activated ester is then attacked by DMAP. This cationic intermediate is then attacked by the hydroxyl group, which eliminates the DMAP to form the desired ester in a 60% yield. With this ester now complete, all that remained was the final deprotections. The benzyl groups could be removed using catalytic hydrogenation of rainy nickel, and the mom cleavage could be achieved using hydrochloric acid to produce an abscessin C in a 74% yield over two steps. Well, that brings us to the end of this synthesis. Join me in the next video where we will look at the total synthesis of lizodendoric acid A.